Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Subscribe to this family-friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss on any post. Also, follow me on Instagram so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, we have Bell Collective Season 1 Episode 2 entitled Wigs and Waffles. I have the recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around. All of the minute marks are in the comments. Now let's get to the recap. Latrice talks to Melanie, her publicist, concerning future endeavors when it comes to expanding. Latrice wants to launch a new hairline in addition to Goddess Lent's virgin hair, which she recalls evolved from literally selling out of the trunk of her car. Customers would be wrapped around the building like a McDonald's waiting for these services. That conversation is interrupted by Latrice's husband, who greets Melanie and says, well, hello, beautiful, you looking nice, and compliments her beauty. Latrice gets off the phone and says that, hey, I want to connect with you some other time. We can chat then. After she gets off the phone, she says in a joking way, now, you're not supposed to call anybody else beautiful. I'm your wife. And he says, well, you know, I'm just complimenting her. It's not that serious. Latrice updates her husband about the next steps concerning her business and if he still wants to invest in an already established company. He confirms that he's more than open to investing. He's her husband. He's there for her. But Latrice is concerned his investments won't stay separate from him being the investor and not trying to control anything. Latrice expresses that she built Goddess Lentz all by herself. That's her baby, even when he didn't believe that the brand would do anything. Now that the company is prosperous, he has all of this interest in wanting to invest. And Latrice doesn't want anybody messing with her baby that she created and built all by herself. She assumes that he will try to take control and her business gut is making her doubtful of her husband investing in the company. Letitia and Tambra catch up, and Letitia upstate Tambra concerning drama that occurred at the Women's Empowerment Brunch. And Tambra is concerned and wondering what kind of drama could occur at a Women's Empowerment Brunch. She informs her about an unfortunate back and forth between Latrice and Marie concerning a hair purchase. Marie bought some hair and it was not up to par and she brought it up at the brunch. Letitia didn't even get a chance to make her announcement concerning Ferris Street. Her goal was to inform the ladies about this real estate opportunity and to network. Tambra's birthday celebration is approaching and she's invited all of the ladies and everyone to the event and questions should she be concerned and Letitia says I have no idea what the ladies are going to do I can't speak for them there's no telling but what I can do is step in to make sure that everything's peaceful and maybe these ladies can talk to hash everything out. Marie takes a moment to speak with her business partner and friend, Essie, about not only her family life, but the static that she went through at the brunch. She says that her personal life is busy with not only taking care of her children, but her oldest son, who has baby's mama staying there, and their kids. She says that she takes care of everyone because nobody else can. She wants them to be in an environment where they're seeing her take care of everything and maybe be inspired to do better. She also wants her grandchildren to see success. As for the ladies luncheon, she explains that she went to Latrice to tell her about hair that she brought that was under par and that was absolutely terrible. Of course, both ladies, when telling their friends about the event, they both exaggerate about what really happened. She explains that I'm the customer and a customer is never wrong. And if that's the way Latrice handles her business, there's no way that she's a boss. She also expresses that Tambra has a birthday celebration coming up and she cannot wait for the opportunity to address Latrice again. Letitia meets with Dorothy Davis, the Ferris Street Community Liaison. She's educating Letitia about not only the properties that were there before, but the existing businesses that still exist, some for 30 years. Letitia wants to protect the existing small businesses and evolve with new endeavors. She explains that her grandfather, who recently passed away, would tell her that Ferris Street used to be the hug of the community for African Americans. Black people had their own businesses. There were ways of celebrating. There was constant communication 
conversation and talking, and they needed that back in the community. Dorothy shares stories about Barack Obama and even B.B. King, as well as other celebrities at the Peaches Cafe, where they would come to eat and communicate. Dorothy wants Letitia to know that Ferris Street is not only history, but black history. Letitia wants everyone to get along so they can focus on the bigger picture, growing and developing and claiming their blocks and streets that were taken. Latrice and Antoinette take a moment to catch up, and Latrice wants to share some samples of shampoo, conditioner, edge control, and some other items from the Goddess Links line. They even take a moment to vent about Marie's behavior at the brunch. They feel that they don't want to argue and for everyone to get along, but they didn't appreciate how Marie brought up such a topic at the brunch. Antoinette is proud of her home remodeling after such a, a very, very fast divorce. Her divorce was very specific in how they wanted to split everything. She wanted a new beginning and she has this box left of her ex-husband's belongings of photos and what to do with them exactly she doesn't know. Everyone perceived that they were this perfect couple and everything was right but she believes that what drove them apart was the discussions about having children. She feels that she wanted to have children eventually but felt that everything would stop when it came to developing her career and she wanted to keep going with her progress and by having a child at that time she didn't think it was right she wants to have children in the future but just not now Tamara and stylist ken meet up to look at fashions and to catch up Ken has worked with her and the radio stations for special events such as fashion shows and gatherings. Tambra needs something to wear for her birthday celebration. She wants two different party looks. One for her family, which is a more private endeavor, and also the, for the party with her friends and co-workers. Tambra expresses how her parents place extra pressure on her to have children, but Tambra isn't ready. The good news is Tambra has frozen her eggs. And they joke about how Tambra had this opportunity where this NBA player offered her $1 million to have a baby with her. But she didn't want to just take the opportunity because she doesn't love him. She just didn't want to have a baby with some random person. The guy that gave her the offer said that she he felt that she was a good person and that they could make a baby. But she politely declined. Antoinette meets with her friend Kaylin to help her get rid of stuff that her ex-husband left behind. Kaylin learns about the static Antoinette had while in her marriage when the topic came up about children. She says that she wasn't ready for kids and feared the turmoil of her kids not only being biracial but in Mississippi. Her and Kaylin are really good friends and have known each other for years. Kaylin was even there during the courtship of Antoinette and her ex-husband so she's fully aware of of how long and how deep the conversation went. Kaylin wants to know, is it really over between you and your ex-husband? If it's really over and you don't wanna take a moment to try to rekindle anything, we've got to do something symbolic to let everything go. So they decide that they're just gonna hit the ball and take out some anger and let things go. Antoinette takes a moment to say, yeah, it's really over and I just feel like everything is just dis disoriented. With him gone and expanding my business, being somebody's wife and then not being somebody's wife, Am I a nobody? I mean, I really enjoyed being married, and now I'm walking through everything alone. Antoinette hits the ball, and they run while shedding some tears, and then keep running, and then the tears turn into laughter until they slide into home base. And Antoinette thanks her for helping to uplift her spirits and to do anything just to symbolize moving on and getting rid of emotional baggage slowly but carefully. Now it's time for Tambor's birthday celebration and Leticia wants to make sure that all beefs are squashed and everybody has an opportunity to express what happened that day at the branch. Latrice and her hubby and her publicist show up together and Latrice says hey to everybody, wants to make sure that everybody can see her and can say hello and she says in her production clip that wherever you see her, you see her her husband and he doesn't like to be excluded from any of the events that she goes to he always wants to know her whereabouts and where she's located at all time Letitia said that she wants to clarify and discuss what happened at the brunch and Latrice was disappointed that Marie didn't approach her 
during business hours to state such dissatisfaction with a product that she believes wasn't even hers. Letitia says that it's unfortunate that it happened and she really wanted to make an announcement and she couldn't do that because there was an unfortunate back and forth. So she wants everybody to hash it out, but everybody have a moment to, to speak. And it's unfortunate that everyone had to meet Marie in such a way. And then as she's speaking, Antoinette wants to know, well, what she do speaking and talking about Marie? Letitia says, well, she's a multimillionaire who owns a home and health agency and she's she's a very private person and she's not really in the social light and Antoinette says well she, okay so she basically she's a professional but um not basically in a in a brunch situation and the teacher says well what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna sit here and talk bad about her because she is my friend and Latrice's husband says okay that's enough of the little petty back and forth let's just do what we came here to do and that's the to party and so everybody kind of changes their mood and listens to the music and tries to move on Marie then arrives with her friend Essie to the party and she is just very happy that her bodysuit is black, lacy, and sexy and she can't wait to party. Leticia greets her with open arms and Latrice quickly walks away to sit down. And Latrice tells her hub, hubby and her publicist, well, Ash, there she go. That's the Marie lady. Leticia wants Marie to talk with Latrice, but Marie is not having it. Tambra arrives, and everyone is happy to see her. And the publicist, Latrice's publicist, brings Latrice over to talk to Marie, but Marie tells everybody that it's neither the time nor the place. So Leticia says, well, we'll celebrate Tambra's birthday, but we will have to circle back about this brunch topic. They try to start che cheering, holding their glasses up to take a toast, but Marie doesn't hold up her glass. Marie feels that it's fake and she's not up for the BS. Leticia says that, hey, it's an olive branch and this is an opportunity to talk. As she's telling her that, Latrice and her publicist and everybody kind of walk off and Latricia says, look, this is an opportunity to just talk and squash. You may not be able to feel like moving on right now, but it is an olive branch and I feel that it's fair that you talk about this matter eventually, hopefully soon, not a ways away, but we got to talk about it now and she should be big enough to have these conversations. Latricia pulls a moment to take Antoinette to the side to talk about Antoinette and to see how they can help squash the situation. Latricia says that there's no shade. She just wants everybody to get along and air out their feelings. Antoinette says, well, I'm just going to tell you straight up that I talk major stuff about your luncheon or your brunch, and I'm sorry, and I'm even open to helping with future endeavors and another brunch. And Latricia says, well, that's okay. I'll talk about, you talk about my waffles, and I'll talk about how your wig is now pulled all the way up to the front. And Antoinette is just like, oh, okay, okay. And they share a little tiki ki 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 because Latricia is saying she can talk about my waffles, and I'm going to talk about her wig not being up front. It's shade for shade, honey. You talk about my waffles, I talk about your wig. It's fair. Antoinette says, look, anything I said in the past, I apologize for because my friend was upset at the brunch, so I backed her up. But moving forward, anything that I say, I'm going to say directly to you. So if you hear otherwise, it's gossip. Don't listen to it. And um, Leticia says, well, good. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now we got to work together as a team to make sure Latrice and Marie can talk and they can squash the situation that happened at the brunch. Tambra takes a moment to give a toast to thank everybody for showing up and having a good time and wants everybody to remember that whatever goes on, we've got to remember that we represent Jackson, Mississippi's finest. We're business people. We have to stay focused. We have to communicate. We have to have each other's backs and we have to enjoy our lives. She acknowledges that this is my birthday celebration, but I want everybody to live and enjoy life. They all agree. They raise their glasses they toast they have a good time they take pictures and that is the end of the episode now i don't know if this episode and series is dry because we're used to drama and other reality shows but you guys it's feeling kind of dry to me and i had to check my way of thinking because i'm like whoa this is a different reality show hopefully it's showing successful black women who are self-made millionaires so i had to pump the brakes on how i said this show was quote unquote dry as i'm watching it we're still getting to know everybody 
And for it to just rush, in, rush into some deep, deep drama, maybe that would have been too much for an audience and maybe pushed away some people. But also it may push away even more viewers if they feel it's not worth watching and it's kind of boring. So I'm just going to stick this one out and just see how it develops and grows. Hopefully it's just one of those reality shows where we're getting to know people's stories and it doesn't have to be any drama. We could just watch people's lives and how they evolve and how they're business women and how family is co-mingling with everybody else and I think that's what they're giving us so far let me just say I was so happy to see Letitia's I know throughout my voiceover I probably said her name wrong 50,000 times I know y'all are gonna say that in the comments but let me clarify that I was voiceovering by pure memory and it being fresh in my mind and doing the voiceover so if I just pronounce anybody's name incorrectly blame it on my Texas accent we had Letitia Latrice Tambra we had all of these names I was trying to get used to so please just give me some slack on that one if I'm still pronouncing it incorrectly on episode five we got some problems so i'm gonna make sure i get it tight and get it right so you gotta forgive me on that but i do love the fact how she talked with doris uh, dorothy in the history of ferris street i thought that was very beautiful and that's that just one city we got to keep in mind that that city's across america we cannot forget how racism and massacres wiped away black businesses across the united states we have to acknowledge that we have to acknowledge Acknowledge how businesses were pushed out because of redlining and because of racism and I think it's absolutely beautiful that she wants to revamp not only small the small businesses and keeping them there and making sure that they keep that tradition but also adding in more new endeavors that can hypen up and give a hip feel to the city to that environment to that street without wiping away all of the history that was there before so bravo to Letitia's vision and entrepreneurship and also real estate and reclaiming those streets and specifically Ferris Street to keep that tradition there that history and black history Marie, Marie, Marie. Going into it just based upon the previews for episode one and also a little bit of snippet that we saw on the own network of what this show would bring to the table. In my mind, you were my favorite. I hope that moving on in the future that you check certain behaviors and how it could affect other people. As I said in the first episode review, I thought it was inappropriate how you brought up a business customer situation at a brunch i feel that that could have been brought to her differently and i did discuss it in episode one make sure you click the, click the link in the comments if you want to see the review for that one but also i did say that i have would take a good guess that i think marie has so much going on at home that it's affecting her behavior now what you give off marie is that you're kind of jealous and you're not liking the new vibes of the other entrepreneurs it's giving off a vibe as if you're intimidated by other business women even though that might not be your intention that's what you're giving off you giving off this terrible energy and this woman hasn't even done anything to you personally latrice did her best to defend herself without disrupting the event but you was wrong sister but i love you i love you and i see what you're doing and everybody makes mistakes hopefully marie will take the time to say i'm sorry <laughs> i apologize for the way that i behave and i should have brought you to that in another way highly unlikely she gonna apologize she don't look like the type that's gonna take a minute to, to apologize especially when she put them red bottoms on the top of that desk and was ready to go down and tell latrice a little something something but she didn't at Tamara's party i mean she was right that it's another time and another place to bring it up but you did bring it up at a brunch so i guess latrice and everybody else thought well a birthday celebration can't be too different you brought that up there why did you talk about it there but i'm glad it didn't cause any drama and that they did agree to kind of circle back around now leticia she's the mediator she's giving off mediator vibes to me i am a mediator so i can connect with her how she's like look i'm not trying to take anybody's side side but i do want to try to talk about this i also like how she stood up for marie even though marie was wrong she said you're not about to sit here antoinette and talk about my friend like that i'm just trying to be the connecting force to where y'all can squash it and get everything together speaking of antoinette honey 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 i could tell that you um uh, <laughs> 
maybe a person you are sticking up for your friend but it comes off as very messy 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 could you have been behind the scenes making the situation a little worse because you admit it i've talked about it and i'm sorry and i didn't mean i talked about your waffles or talked about your brunch um adding fuel to the fire doesn't make things better antoinette and i got a feeling that antoinette throughout this season is gonna add unnecessary fuel to small fires we're gonna watch out for that i did feel sorry for antoinette and how she was feeling about her divorce because in the south like i said in the first review the south can make you feel like trash if you're not married and if you don't have children but antoinette please understand i don't have children but what i hear over and over from people who are in successful marriages and who have children there is never a perfect quote-unquote time to have kids <laughs> kids are unpredictable what comes with children are unpredictable there's nothing that you can do to prepare you're developing a foundation i get it and you want to have your business endeavors in line but was it worth losing your husband over i feel that with marriage it's a compromise right it's a compromise and you talk about the wants you wanted children but not at that time which is fair but was it something that could have been a driving force was it worth it to drive a wedge between your husband could have been something that you guys could have seek counseling for and maybe you could have received more counseling from people who are in marriages with kids who are millionaires who are successful entrepreneurs who have kids i get it i think about kids and it's scary i think about kids and i just get sleepy because i know that they're exhausting <laughs> but that's something that you talk to your husband about. It's going to be something that you're going to have to talk to the, the next person about because they may want to have children or you may meet somebody who doesn't want kids at all. But please understand from people who have kids, they'll tell you up front, there's nothing you could do that you could prepare for kids. I mean, it's just something you got to learn as a parent. It's the same situation with Tambra, but what's different in Tambra's situation is that she froze her eggs, which was smart. She was thinking, I have these business endeavors going on, and I haven't really met anybody special yet to have kids with. I even had a guy offer me a million dollars to have a baby with him. It's just something I don't want. But she was smart enough to say that if this situation occurs, I can at least still freeze my eggs. So if the opportunity presents, presents itself, if I get to an age to where I can't have children or I'm not making any more eggs I got some eggs on the rock so it was smart let me know what you thought about this video please make sure to leave your comments below I tried to summarize everything as quickly as possible I did not realize you guys that I did not post <laughs> this episode two but please make sure to check out episode three which airs today and I will make sure to give my recap and review this Sunday all right this Sunday look out for the review of episode three of bell collective on sunday january 31st i apologize for it being so long but i actually totally forgot that i didn't post it and i apologize you guys but i'll see you for the next recap and review make sure to put your comments below and check out the episode one recap and review if you haven't already in the meantime in between time take care of each other love one another i love you guys peace